Welcome to the Methodist Church Guyana District's Divine Worship. We are happy that you have joined us today. The Methodist Church Guyana District is one of eight districts that comprise the Methodist Church in the Caribbean and the Americas. There are six circuits that make up the Guyana District. Burbies, Essequibo, Friendship, Georgetown, Mahaika, and West Demerara, with the United Mission Linden as an associate church. The president of the Guyana district is Bishop the Reverend Taslin Kofia Niles. The secretary to the district conference is Reverend Mervyn Ossie Austin while the treasurer of the district funds is Miss Yolanda Abiola James. The mission of our church is to spread scriptural holiness for the reformation of the nation, while our district theme is sanctify yourselves for mission, connect, give hope, restore. The church could be contacted on telephone number 592-226-1242 our email address is guyanamethodist at yahoo.com. You can follow us on our YouTube channel and Facebook page as Methodist Church Guyana District and on Instagram as Methodist Guy 592 District. Every blessing.
for joining the Methodist Church, Guyana District, on this, the 26th Lord's Day after Pentecost. I am Reverend Brown Hostel, your liturgist for today, and our preacher is the dynamic man of God, Reverend Mervyn Austin, who serves as superintendent for the Burbies and Mayaka circuits. We are so grateful that you have joined us today. And we would like to remind you that this is a time of worship and so we ask that whatever other activities you are engaged in that you'll cease for a moment as we come into God's presence. Let us center our hearts on the one who loves us with an everlasting love and bids us to come unto him. The call to worship. It is done. God has always been in charge yesterday and today. Even when things seem out of control, God's reign is on its way. Let us prepare the way for God. Amen. And we sing the hymn of preparation. Rejoice, the Lord is King, number 142. of this world do not have the last word. 
You are the one who was and is and who is yet to come, a ruler of a different kind. Open our hearts to the comfort, the challenge, and the mystery of this good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, your faithful witness, we pray. Amen. And even as we acknowledge God for who God is, we look on ourselves and we see how feeble we can be at times, not always walking in the path of obedience, but God in God's loving kindness and mercy extends the opportunity for us to, to seek forgiveness for our sins. And so we engage a time of confession. Let us pray. God of all creation, before time and beyond space, we admit to our human limits as we try to imagine the reign of truth that you envision for us. Pardon us when we follow worldly powers and stray from the good path you desire for all you have created. Give us Jesus. Forgive us of our sins and give us Jesus, O oh God. Not a Jesus high lifted up, but chained and arraigned by authorities with boldness to tell the truth. Speak through our words and deeds that your will may be done in our time. Embolden us with the confidence that your reign will one day come. Amen. And so we are assured God's promises are everlasting, ordered and secure. God loves us and frees us. Accept God's forgiveness for we are indeed forgiven. Amen. Thanks be to God. And truly the presence of the Lord is in this place. I know in some of our chapels, at least across the Ghana district, that we are celebrating our harvest festival. And God has been so, 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 so good. Do we have a witness today? Do we have a, uh, somebody who's willing to give a testimony of the goodness of God? And so we'll engage a time of praise and worship as we lift our hearts and we sing unto our God, our Lord and Savior.
according to the gospel the gospel according to st john chapter 18 reading from verse 33 to 37 glory to you O god then Pilate entered the headquarters again summoned jesus and asked him are you the king of the jews jesus answered do you ask this on your own or did others tell you about me Pilate replied i am not a jew am i your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me what have you done jesus answered my kingdom is not from the world from this world if my kingdom were from this world my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the jews but as it is my kingdom is not from here Pilate asked him so you are a king jesus answered you say that i am a king for this i was born and for this i came into the world to testify to the truth everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice this is the gospel of christ praise be to christ our lord and invite us to set our hearts at the right place as we hear from the man of god reverend Marvin austin after which we'll be blessed by our choir who will do a song of response Good morning brothers and sisters this is truly a joy and a privilege to be sharing the word of god with you this morning i pray that as we journey through the word of god today we journey in the word of god today that your hearts will be encouraged i share with you this morning from first samuel chapter 1 from verse 4 to verse 20. i read those verses for you here beginneth the reading. On the day when Elkanah sacrificed, he would give portions to his wife Penina and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah he gave a double portion because he loved her, though the Lord had closed her womb. Her rival used to provoke her severely to irritate her because the Lord had closed her womb. So it went on year by year, as often as she went up to the house of the Lord, she used to provoke her. Therefore, Hannah wept and would not eat. Her husband Elkanah said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? Why is your heart sad? Am I not more to you than ten sons? After they had eaten and drunk a Shiloh, Hannah rose and presented herself before the Lord. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. She was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. She made this vow, O Lord of hosts, if only you will look on the misery of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a male child, then I will set him before you as a Nazarite until the day of his death. He shall drink neither wine nor intoxicants, nor, and no razor shall touch his head. As she continued praying before the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying silently. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, how long will you make a drunken spectacle of yourself? Put away your wine. But Hannah answered, No, my lord, I am a woman deeply troubled. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman, 
for I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation all this time. Then Eli answered, Go in peace. The God of Israel grant the petition you have made to him. And she said, Let your servant find favor in your sight. Then the woman went to her quarters, ate and drank with her husband, and her countenance was sad no longer. They rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. Then they went back to their house at Ramah. Elkanah knew his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. In due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son. She named him Samuel, for she said, I have asked him of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gracious God, we give you thanks and we give you praise for your wonderful and beautiful word. This word, O oh God, that gives us hope in the midst of hopelessness. This word that continues to reassure us that all will be well for those who trust in you. And so, Lord God, this morning, even as you have called me to break your word to your people, we ask, Lord God, that self will decrease while you increase within me. And together may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I was speaking to a friend who was recounting some challenges he had during the year with his job. It so happened that my friend ended up leaving his job, which placed some strain on him financially. He said, Mervyn, I ended up depleting my savings and many of the plans I had this, this year, I had to put them on the shelf. But then he hastened to add that in the midst of his difficulties, he experienced the presence of God. He said it was the presence of God that strengthened him that he would walk steadfastly in the midst of his trials. Perhaps it is this morning that you are faced with many difficulties and hardships. I have come to remind you that God is a present help in the midst of your adversities. As a matter of fact, Psalm 46 reminds us that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. The book of Samuel describes the transition of leadership from the time of the judges. In chapter 1 of the book of Samuel, we encounter the story of Samuel and his family. In the text, 1 Samuel 1, 4-20, where we learn of Samuel and his family, we see the presence of God revealed in the midst of adversity. In the text we are told that Hannah, a faithful servant of the Lord, faced her own adversity. According to the text, she journeyed yearly to the place of worship to offer her sacrifices to God. But even though Hannah was a faithful servant of God and a wife, the text tells us that she was a barren woman. As a matter of fact, the text makes it clear that she was a barren woman because the Lord had closed her womb. On account of her barrenness, every year that the family went up to, to worship God at the tabernacle, Penina, the other wife of Elkanah, would torment Hannah. Hannah became frustrated. So deep was her frustration that she wept and did not eat. Her heart was saddened and not even her husband could understand her pain. But the truth is, even though Hannah was frustrated by her enemy, even though her husband could not understand her frustration, even though the priest judged her incorrectly, Hannah recognized that there is a God who was and is bigger than the taunts of the enemy. She recognized that the God she worshipped was a God who understood her inner pains and, and groanings and possessed the power to lift her above and beyond her barrenness. The text tells us that Hannah cried out to the Lord, to the suffering God, who heard her cries for her son. 
that she will return to him. And the God who heard her cries answered her prayer. Brothers and sisters, we are reminded today that the very God who answered Hannah's prayer yesterday is the same God who is present and available to us today and forever in the midst of our adversities. So the question to all of us this morning, all of you under the sound of my voice, all of you listening to me this morning, the question to you is what is your adversity today? Is it sickness? Is it the emotional pain? Is it the struggle with your finances? Is it the struggle with, with your walk with the Lord? Is it your social life? Is it the trouble you are facing with, with your family, with your son, with your daughter, with your niece, with your nephew that you are worried about? What is your adversity this morning? Is it that you are having difficulties at work? I say to you this morning, that whatever is your adversity, whatever it is that, that is difficult that you are facing, I say to you that in the midst of, God is your present help. Turn to your neighbor, turn to your family and say to them, tell them this morning, in the midst of your adversity, God is your present help. Therefore, I say to all of us, mothers and guardians, husbands and wives, Christians as a whole, I say to us, people of God, that whatever is your adversity or adversities, whatever there is or are, I say to you to take it to the Lord in prayer. Now, prayer is that conversation, that dialogue we, we have with God. Now Hannah knew the importance of prayer. The text tells us that after all the frustration and the torment, Hannah presented herself before the Lord interceding in the midst of her pain. The text does not say Hannah sought her own devices. And the text does not say either that she took matters into her own hands. Rather, the text tells us and tells us clearly that in the midst of her adversity, Hannah went before the Lord in prayer. Now this is important for us today. Because the truth is, what Anna experienced many years ago, many women are experiencing it, experiencing it even now, even in the church. The truth is they are married women. But even though they are married, their husbands have other women. And the truth is, some of the other women are very brazen. They aren't going to keep quiet about the relationship. They want to let you know, the wife, that they are better than you. They're going to call the house number and cuss you out. Some of them even so brazen that when they see you on the road, instead of passing straight, they're going to drop, they're going to drop a word, they're going to drop in for you. As a matter of fact, some of them even go, go as far as to send a message to the house to let you know that they have your man. As a matter of fact, some of you even, you even go further. That they will cook food and, and send to the house for, for the man who is not their own. They are going to call the radio program. And they are going to send out greetings to Bay. And for some of them even go a little further. They are going to put up the man picture on the statuses and social media platforms. And call him their own Bay. Just to provoke and frustrate you. But Hannah was in a similar boat. She was in a similar position. But the text tells us that Hannah, in the midst of her frustration, came before the Lord in prayer. I know some of you listening to me this morning and reading the text were probably saying, are probably saying, Hannah was a stupid woman. Soft woman. She taken her. Let her be me. When I been done, put a licking in she. She would have known. As a matter of fact, some of us might be even thinking in our own evil and wicked mind that if that was me, I would have put a good obi in she and when they're done, she would have never be another side chick. The truth is, my brothers and sisters, but Hannah did not do that. Hannah came before the Lord in prayer. On the other hand, you see, my brothers and sisters, there are some of us when we are going through pain and frustration, when we are going through the difficult circumstances of life, 
there is a tendency for us to make our back steps and our porch and our veranda the, the Jerry Springer and the Murray Live. The whole world must know about the unfaithful husband. The whole world must know when the husband or the wife is not fulfilling their obligations. Or when the husband is not working. Or when the children are delinquent. Or when the house money is not enough. Or when the rent money is short. Or for some of us, my brothers and sisters, if we are not loud enough for the entire community to hear our, about our frustrations and our pains and our trials and our difficult circumstances we are on the phone or on the neighbor back steps or on the neighbor porch or veranda and we are going on and on for some of us we go on and on as to how the woman ain't good or how the man ain't good or we telling them all that is happening in the household but you see my brothers and sisters you see church I have come to realize that we have to be careful who we share our business with. There are some people, they would gladly hear yours, but they never have theirs to share. And the truth is, I'm saying to all of us this morning, that all of us experience trials and adversities and the trouble. We all experience difficult moments, but you never hear about theirs. Then there are others... When you tell them your problems, you have to be careful of the advice you receive. As someone once said, careful who you allow to whisper in your ears. It is not that counsel is not wise, but we have to be careful who we take counsel from. As a matter of fact, the word of God says, come on to me all those who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. James chapter 4 and verse 8 tells us, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Through prayer, my brothers and sisters, we are ushered into the presence of God. And what we notice from the text is that after praying, the text tells us that Hannah experienced the peace of God. She found favor with God and was able to eat and drink with her husband and her countenance was sad no longer. God was the present help in the midst of her barrenness. So sisters and brothers, God is inviting you in the midst of your adversities to approach his throne today. God is able to deliver. He is that present help in every single situation. He is a prayer answering God. As a matter of fact, if you don't believe me, that is, word, that is God that we serve is a prayer answering God. Let us search the scriptures. As a matter of fact, we will remember the story of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, when he received word that his land was being invaded. In 2 Chronicles verse 20 verse 1 to 24, we read how the king prayed fervently to the Lord. The word of God tells us that he says, O Lord, God of our fathers, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over the kingdoms of the, of, of the nations. Power and might are in your hands and no one can withstand you. O our God, did you not drive all the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel, and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend. As a matter of fact, as we read further down into the text, we realize where Jehoshaphat acknowledged God's power and his help in previous circumstances. He was aware of his inability and his lack of knowledge, and he proclaimed his trust in God. God answered his cry for help in a miraculous way. That 2 Chronicles 20 and verse 15 reports God's message. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours but God's. Early in the morning when Jehoshaphat gathered his army and urged them to have faith in God. When they arrived at the battlefield they found that the Lord had already won the victory. 
The truth is, if that is not enough, let's search the scripture again as we look at the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, where they were three men who refused to bow before anyone or anything but God. When they refused, King Nebuchadnezzar ordered, ordered them to bow down. They told the king, if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it and he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he does not, we, we, we want you to know, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image you set up because of this, the disobedience. Because of their disobedience, the king threw them into the blazing furnace. But this we, keep, we see, that the king immediately saw that they were not harmed. As a matter of fact, when we read Daniel chapter 3, 26 to 27, it says, So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, and the satraps, the, the prefects, the governors, and the royal advisors crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies. Their robes were not scorched and there was no smell of fire on them. That is the God we serve. That is the mighty and powerful God we serve. The God who is able to bring us, uh, bring us out, of, out of adversities. The God who is able to answer our prayers. As a matter of fact, I always remember this movie line the story of the movie line in the in war room i will always remember that movie though it was released some years ago where the husband and the wife they were pretty much successful they had their dream house and things were going on for them but there came a time in their life, in their marriage, where the husband began to flirt with temptation. And the wife herself became increasingly bitter, crumbling under the strain of a failing marriage. The lives that were going good took an unexpected turn. But the truth is, my brothers and sisters, as God would have it, the wife threw all of her clients was encouraged to seek happiness through prayer. And the truth is, after that moment, as they came before God, as they built their altar as a family, as they interceded in the presence of God, as they worshipped God, what we recognize is that, it, is that the circumstances began to change and so it is my brothers and sisters yes you face adversity and I'm sure if I'm to ask you to name them there will be many this morning but I say to you in the midst of your adversities in the midst of your difficulties in the midst of your hardships are you willing to be a people of prayer Will you bring the illness, the cancer, the hypertension, the diabetes? Will you bring the illness that the doctors say that there is no hope for you before God? Will you bring the emotional pain, the financial adversity, your walk with God, your social life, the trouble in your family, the son, the daughter, the niece, the nephew that you are worried about? Will you bring them before God this morning in prayer? There might be many difficulties and challenges that you are facing at work. But I say bring them before God in prayer. There is no difficulty, there is no challenge that is bigger than the God I serve. So whatever is the adversity, I ask of you, will you give it to God in prayer? I firmly believe that when you surrender your trials, your struggles, your difficulties to God in prayer, that you shall experience the peace of God 
in the midst of your adversities. So will you come before God in prayer today? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Perhaps it is this morning you are struggling. You are struggling with one battle after the other. It will seem as if, it will seem as if when it rains it pours. It seems as if there is no answer, there is no solution, there is no light at the end of the tunnel. But I say to you in this moment to talk to God. Gracious God, we give you thanks and we give you praise for your word to us. We thank you, Lord God, that we have that balm in Gideon. We have the one true and living God that we can come to express our hurts, our frustration, our pains, our groanings, we can come to talk to at any time, knowing that you are that God who loves us the same, and that you are the God, the King of all creation, who is interested in our welfare and very much present with us, even as we go through life's challenges. So Lord God, your word has gone forth. You know, O oh God, the hearts of your people. You know, O oh God, where they are located. You know those who are crying out to you at this time. Lord, we ask of you today that you will attend unto their prayers. We ask of you, Lord God, that you will heal their bodies and you will bring deliverance, Lord God, to their souls. Lord God, you are the present help. And so, Lord God, we trust you. And even as you have begun a good work, we trust you in this moment to bring it to completion. So, Lord God, we say thank you. And may you continue, Lord God, to fulfill your purpose in all of our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray.
those here are God who are various afflictions, afflictions of body, mind, and soul. And I just ask, mighty God, that you will stand in the gap for those there are God, those, oh mighty God, who are tired and are frustrated, frustrated of taking different types of medication on a daily basis, frustrated, oh mighty God, of just going to the doctors, frustrated, there are God, of just living. And I pray that you will be for them a light, a beacon, a ray of hope. Lord, we remember, even now, in a special way, those who have been ostracized from living in society. Remember, dear Lord God, those who are living on the margins of society, those who are lonely, those who constantly wonder if you are real. And so, Lord God, I pray even now that you meet your people at their points of need. Mighty God, I pray that they will ponder and know in their circumstances what the Almighty can do. And so, God, remember those, even now, who are mourning, those who have recently laid loved ones to rest, those who are in the preparation of doing the last rites, and so, God, you know the aching void that has been created. And we just pray even now that you will give unto your people that which you have promised, that you extend to them your peace. Sovereign Lord, we pray even for us as a church, as we prepare for Advent, that indeed, O oh God, your word will come from a place of inspiration and renewal, that our hearts will be convicted that Jesus Christ is Lord, he is risen, and that he will come again. So God, prepare us as we continue to prepare for you. In Christ's name we pray thanksgiving as you have taught us. Our oh, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. On behalf of our district president, Bishop T. Kofi Annan, the pleasure is mine to extend to you warm greetings. We are really happy that you have taken the time to join us today. And we trust that the worship experience, and especially the word that was delivered, has found a new place in your heart. And I trust that by God's grace, you will continue to respond in the affirmative. As we continue in celebration, I know in some of our chapels, as I have mentioned, that persons are celebrating harvest this week, going over into next Sunday. I trust that even as you gather to celebrate, in spite of the circumstances, that you reflect in a meaningful way on the goodness of God, on the providential care of God, and respond from a place of gratitude. Gratitude is always a must, brothers and sisters. And so I take this time to extend greetings uh, to persons who would have celebrated birthdays in the week that has passed and in the week that is to come, birthdays or any other significant anniversaries. God has been good and we trust that the Lord will continue to endow you with his favor. Do continue to participate in the various offerings that we have for spiritual nurturing and the development in the things of God. And so, yes, our Bible studies continue on Wednesdays at 5.30 or 17.30 hours on our Zoom platform. We have our children prime time. We have Sunday school that is offered virtually in some spaces. So I trust that whatever offerings are available, that indeed will partake of them as you seek to grow in the love and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is Christ the King. So I pray a blessing upon you and your loved ones for today and the week ahead. I trust that you experience the favor of God in a very important way and that you return your testimony. You'll be able to say to somebody, look what the Lord has done. We continue to encourage you to reach out to those who have not been in chapel, you know, the restrictions that are bound, and those who have just been away from the fellowship for some time, continue to extend 
that handle fellowship and hospitality where it is necessary. So you have a wonderful week and may God's peace be with you. And as we prepare to bring this time of worship to an end, we'll blend our voices as we sing this wonderful treasure from the Christian faith, the hymn, My Eyes Have Seen the Glory, number 136 in our voices in praise. May God's grace and peace be with you, henceforth and forevermore. Amen.